All right, welcome. In this lab, we are going to be performing a titration. And this is going to be an example of a redox titration as opposed to an acid base titration. And we are going to be titrating some hydrogen peroxide. This is going to be our unknown solution. We're trying to figure out the molarity of our hydrogen peroxide. And we are titrating it with potassium permanganate, which is this purple solution that is in the burette. So we're going to have hydrogen peroxide in our flask and we're gonna have potassium permanganate in our burette. And what we're gonna do next is we are going to measure out a precise volume of our unknown solution. So I'm going to use, this is a volumetric pipette, and I'm going to, what I do is I fill the liquid up to the mark zero here, and then I'm gonna go over here to my flask and I'm going to empty this till it reaches um, 2.0 milliliters, okay? So I have it, it added exactly 2.00. I'm actually accurate to the hundredths place with this. So 2.00 milliliters of hydrogen um, peroxide. And then I'm going to add a little bit of water to this. The water's not really serving a purpose in the reaction so much, just making it easier for me to see what's going on. And then I'm going to add some sulfuric acid, so concentrated sulfuric acid. This, it, this uh, reactant is gonna be in excess, so I don't need to measure precisely how much I am using. Okay, and so notice how this solution, it's clear, okay? And then, so I got a clear solution in the um, flask. And then over here in my burette, I have this bright purple solution. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start stirring. I have this little stir bar in here that's going to spin around and mix my solution here. And what we'll notice is that when we add our purple solution to uh, the solution in the flask, you see how the purple disappears? So when my purple solution hits um, the solution in my flask, it kind of vanishes, it turns clear. So this is the reaction that is happening. Your purple potassium permanganate uh, is being added to a solution that contains some hydrogen peroxide and some sulfuric acid. And uh, when they react, they make oxygen gas. This is gonna fizz a little bit, you might notice. Some manganese sulfate, some potassium sulfate and liquid water. And the products of this reaction are all colorless, okay? So when I add my potassium permanganate, um, my purple liquid up here, as I add it, when it turns clear, that tells me that I still have hydrogen peroxide down here in my flask. So this is how I'm gonna tell that I've reached the end point of my reaction, is once I use up all my hydrogen peroxide, when I add a little bit of permanganate, uh, it will not have anything to react with anymore. And then my solution at the bottom will um, slowly, will gradually turn a little bit pink. Okay. So I can add this a little bit quickly at first. And then I wanna slow down as I kind of proceed through the titration. It's often good with titration to do a fast, version of the titration first, so you get a rough sense of about how much um, titrant you're gonna need to reach the endpoint. So you have an idea of when you can go fast and when you need to slow down here. So notice how it's still turning clear. And I, am, I will know I've reached my endpoint of my reaction when I add some permanganate and the solution remains just a little bit um, pink. And this is one of those experimental techniques that um, you get better at with time, you know, be able to turn the dial just enough so you can have it, you know, drip slowly. Um, and when you go beyond your end point of your reaction, that's called overshooting it. So I'm trying to avoid overshooting my end point. So I want to stop 
just right where my solution just stays pink. So notice I'm getting close to my endpoint because I can see my solution staying pink for a little bit. And then it's kind of gradually fading. Let's see if you can get a better view of it. Whoops. Oh, see, I'm almost there. Maybe like one more drop. So you see how right now my solution is staying just this faintest pink color? So that means I have reached the endpoint of my reaction um, because my permanganate has nothing to react with anymore. So now when I add a drop of permanganate, it just stays down here as permanganate. So I now have, I'm at the point where I have excess permanganate, which means um, all of my hydrogen peroxide got used up. So I can figure out, I can take a look at my burette and take some readings and figure out how much permanganate it took to react all of my hydrogen peroxide. And then from that, I should be able to determine what the concentration of my hydrogen peroxide solution was. And if we zoom in and look at our burette, our burettes are kind of hard to read with this because the solution is so dark, but <laughs> the, uh, we'll try and, I don't know if you can see that at all. It looks like, I'm gonna say 35.2, uh, milliliters. So we added 35.2 milliliters of our potassium permanganate. Uh, it's important to know the concentration of our potassium permanganate. The concentration is um, 0.0200 um, molar. So this is 0.02 molar potassium permanganate. It took 35.2 milliliters of it um, to completely re react our two milliliters of hydrogen peroxide. And again, this is the balanced chemical equation. So that gives us all the information that we need in order to uh, determine the concentration of our unknown solution.